Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue to study how the Holy Spirit works in our lives as we read again in the Scriptures, this time reading in 1 Corinthians in chapter 12, uh, a letter from the Apostle Paul to the first churches, um, this time in Corinth in Greece. And Paul writes to the Corinthians in chapter 12, we're reading from verse 4, he writes these words. And as we read them we can think about how the Holy Spirit works in, our, in ourselves. He writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives ability to all for their particular service. Now, some people sometimes get the impression that some have more ability than others, but we all need each other, but in our own different roles. For instance, you wouldn't be wanting me to make the tea and the sandwiches. Uh, I would mess that up and uh, it's better to have me down the front where you can keep an eye to see that I'm doing things right and leave that other kind of job to the people who can do it well. But there you go. Um, and the writer continues, the Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. Isn't that correct? The Spirit gives one person a message full of wisdom. And that can happen as you're having a chat after the service and someone says something wise, gives you an insight that you've been looking for. It's showing you how to do something. Well, to another person, the same Spirit gives a message full of knowledge. And he tells you about some kind of skill perhaps that you've been needing. One and the same Spirit gives faith to one person and faith's great at a church meeting. The person with faith will say, oh yes, hey, we can do this. We can do that. We, we can manage that. We've got the skills and ability. We've got the people. They've got, that person's got the faith to encourage others to go ahead. And that's a great gift, faith. Um, to uh, another, um, so uh, uh, a message full of wisdom, knowledge, um, faith. And uh, to another person he gives the power to heal. And some Christians want to be nurses or doctors. They want to heal people. And uh, there are many in our hospitals who are Christians because they've been called by God to look after other people and we really do appreciate them especially at this time of COVID-19. The Spirit gives one person the power to work miracles to another the gift of speaking God's message and to another the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. For instance, at a church meeting, you maybe ask for volunteers and somebody will put up their hand and say, I, I could do that. And everybody in the meeting goes, oh, um, oh, is this really the right person for that job? Because there's people there with the ability to tell the difference between gifts that come from the Spirit and those that do not. There's nothing worse, is there, than the wrong person doing the job. They'll make a mess of it. So we need to be wise and listen to what the Holy Spirit says to us. To one person he gives the ability to speak in strange tongues, other languages, and to another he gives the ability to explain what's said, to interpret. And we need both. But it is one and the same Spirit who does all this. Same Holy Spirit. And uh, as he wishes, he gives a different gift to each person. Isn't that wonderful? That's how the Spirit of God works. 
in us. So let's look out for that. Let's look out for these different gifts, not only in ourselves, but in one another. So Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit has enriched the life of the church and given us boldness to go out and tell others about Jesus. You know, the Holy Spirit has got to reign in our lives because we're not our own. We belong to Jesus. We've been bought with a price. Jesus, yes, he came to love and to heal and to uh, show God's love through the miracles that he did, to show signs that God is for us and not against us. And uh, he did all this. And eventually he gave himself for us when he could give no more. So we belong to him. The precious blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. The Holy Spirit strengthens us. We were bought with a price. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, our companion and a guide on the road to eternity. A guide for all the things that the Bible doesn't tell us about. Doesn't tell us how to work a computer. Doesn't tell us how to sort out today's problems in the church or in the world because we've never had these types of problems before. But there are certain principles laid down in the scriptures that the Holy Spirit can guide us in. Now what, how do we know that we're doing these things, that we've got the Holy Spirit in our lives? Well, if we look back, we should be able to see a change in our lives. We should be able to see the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in us. We should be able to see how we've changed more to love, to have peace in our lives, to have joy in our lives, not to try to control everything, but just to sit back and let God take control. He'll tell us when to move and when to stay still. He'll tell us when to get up and when to sit down. He'll tell us when to talk and when to keep silent. So we don't need to control. We've, we've got peace. We've got joy. We'll have patience in our lives. We'll have the kindness, one of the fruits of the Spirit, that comes from the Spirit's guidance. And if we don't have these things, we need to stop what we're doing. Maybe we're still trying to do it all ourselves. Maybe we're still relying on our old nature. We've got to let the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, reign in us. Take us over. Take over our old nature. And that brings kindness, goodness, self-control, long-suffering. If, if we let him. Those who resist and quench and suppress the working of God's Spirit and allow their own human nature to rule in their bodies. They continue to still produce anger and hatred and bitter envy, jealousy, all kinds of fighting and, uh, what else does the scripture say? Witchcraft. That's the occult trying to manipulate people. And it speaks about sorcery and translated into today's language, that's drug taking. They did it back then, they do it again today. It only leads to addiction and death. Drunkenness, that's not a gift of the spirit. Immorality, we can't live like that. Otherwise our faith is a, a, a mockery. We can't be immoral people. We'll face that eternal punishment. 
if we keep on living like that. So there's a battle going on in every heart. And it's a spiritual battle. And Paul speaks about his struggle. His struggle to make the right choices. He says there's, there's two different natures warring in me. And he asks us to be aware of this. And to choose to follow the Holy Spirit. And uh, I believe the Holy Spirit's at work in our services, maybe in a, a quieter way than the Pentecostal churches, and uh, in our hearts. And um, the Holy Spirit's not just concerned with our personal growth, but he's also concerned with the growth of the churches. And we read at the back of the scriptures in the book of Revelation we read that um, listen we read these words listen to what the Spirit says to the churches you know the Spirit of God guides our churches how come our church is still so low in numbers with people leaving yes there's people coming to Christ but they don't stay as they should. Maybe they're attracted by the, these glittering and flashy new churches. But uh, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit's coordinating the churches. And uh, it's um, slowing some of us down and speeding up the rest and and maybe it's bringing others back to our church. Maybe that will come as well. But listen to what the Spirit said to the churches all over the world. The Greek Orthodox Church, the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Salvation Army. Listen to and watch what God's doing in the churches. So... The Holy Spirit's at work in the churches as well as in each one of us. Let's always continue to pray for the Holy Spirit to work on a Sunday morning when we come to church, in the preacher, in one another as we meet together. And if we pray for that, what a difference there'll be. We'll continue to grow. We'll continue to be blessed. Because we've got the promise of God that we will be blessed if we live according to his spirit. You know, William Wordsworth, the great poet, he discerned the Holy Spirit in his life. And uh, he said in one of his writings, in some of his writings, he said, I have felt a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean, and the living air, and in the mind of man a motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought and rolls through the ages. William Wordsworth sees the continuity of the work of the Holy Spirit. And another poet, a woman of God, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, she says in her writings, and I smile to think God's greatness flowed around our incompleteness, round our restlessness, his rest. May you too enter into and know the peace of God and be led by his Holy Spirit in the week ahead. Stay safe and stay blessed until we meet again. Have a great week. Thanks for listening.